Hello and welcome. Uh, this is the last video, depending on which order you're watching these. And <coughs> oh, so sorry. Um, we are going through all of the Wilds of Eldraine videos. Videos. Blah, 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 blah. We are going through all of the Wilds of Eldraine cards, reviewing them, taking a look, deciding which ones are the sleeper hits, which ones we like the most. Um, this is our second take on this. We tried to record this yesterday and we lost all of the VODs. They, none of them had audio. So we're doing this again. Unfortunately, um, if you weren't here for that, all of these reactions are of known quantities. I know all these cards already. Um, don't worry though. If you are starting with this video, you don't have to go all the way to back to white and watch these in order in order to get all the information. I will be explaining all of the set mechanics uh, for each of these videos as we come across them in these folders. Uh, and this is the final folder. So let's finish this strong. These are the colorless cards and the lands, the special lands. We're not gonna go over the basic lands or anything um, of Wilds of Eldraine. So let's get started. The first card we're taking a look at um, actually, before we do that, if you're here on YouTube right now, it would mean the world to me if you could like this video, maybe comment, just say hi, maybe leave a heart, tell me which cards you're looking forward to the most, and then subscribe to our channel. Getting those subscriber numbers up really means the world to us um, and gives us access to more things, gets us seen by more people. Uh, so please, please, please do that if you can. Uh, I would love you forever if you did. Um, so first card in our colorless and lands folder is Agatha's Soul Cauldron. It's two colorless for a legendary artifact. You may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to activate abilities of creatures you control. Creatures you control with plus one plus one counters on them have all activated abilities of all creatures exiled with Agatha's Soul Cauldron. And then you can tap it to exile a card from a graveyard. When a creature card is exiled this way, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. Uh, this is the new and improved um, unlicensed hearse. This is going to be a bomb. This is going to be in every constructed deck. I swear, uh, unlicensed hearse has been a huge hit over the last few years um, because of its ability to reactively exile something from a graveyard or just re retroactively exile things from a graveyard this is unlicensed hearst 2.0 it gives all of your creatures counters uh, it also gives all of your creatures uh, that have counters um, activated abilities of cards that are exiled with it it's just of so much better version of unlicensed hearse it's unbelievable this card is insane uh, next up we have candy trail this one's a fun one it's one colorless for a food clue artifact so you get both the food and the clue aspects of this card when it enters the battlefield you scry two and then you can pay two to sacrifice it you gain three life and draw a card so it's an added value um it's a clue food combined into one it's very cool Collector's Vault is next. It's two colorless for an artifact, and you can pay to tap it uh, to draw a card, then discard a card and create a treasure token. Uh, so accumulated value, it's pretty good. Then we've got Ariette's Tempting Apple. So Ariette is the big bad, the wicked witch. Um, Ariette's Tempting Apple is four colorless for a legendary artifact food. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap it, it gains haste. And then you can pay two to tap and sacrifice the apple to gain three life, so use it as a normal food. Or you can pay two, sacrifice it, um, to and target opponent loses three life, so it's like an opposite, a uh, negative food. Um, I think that's really cool. It's kind of versatile. Um yeah i think it's okay it's it's definitely going to be useful in limited you're going to take control of your opponent's biggest most scariest creature for a turn and you can either gain your own life back or to lose make your opponent lose life so i think it's it's versatile um it's pretty good 
Next up, we have a reprint of Ginger Brute. This was a sleeper card in Throne of Eldraine that became a really big hot ticket item in the Sacrifice decks. So Ginger Brute is one colorless for a 1-1 food golem with haste. You can pay one. Ginger Brute can't be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste. Or you can pay two and sacrifice it and gain three life like a normal food. Um, this is a pretty cool card, and I'm glad they're reprinting it for this set because it became such a popular card long after uh, the original Eldraine set was released. It took people a long time to kind of catch up to that card, and it became a fan favorite, so reprinting it here makes a lot of sense. Uh, next up, we have Hilda's Crown of Winter. So Hilda is the Elsa of the Eldraine world. Um, she's the Ice Queen. This costs three colorless for a legendary artifact. You can pay one to tap it to tap target creature. This ability costs one less to activate during your turn. So it's free to do it on your turn. It costs one to do it on your opponent's turn. And Hilda is a blue-white legendary creature that cares about tapping your opponent's stuff. So this works really well in the synergy of that color archetype. Um, and then you can pay three to sacrifice the crown, draw a card for each tapped creature your opponents control. This works really well in combination with some of the other blue-white cards that can tap multiple of your opponent's stuff. Um, I think this is really neat. It's a cool design. Um, it really only fits... I guess the first ability makes it fit in pretty much any archetype. Um, obviously you're going to get added benefit if you're playing a blue white deck, but it's also pretty decent if you just pick it up in a aggro deck because it turns off a blocker for that turn. Um, so actually it's, it's a lot better than average. Next up we have the iron Craig. It's two colorless for a legendary artifact that taps to add colorless. So it's just a mana rock for two mana, but Whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may have Iron Craig become a legendary equipment artifact named Everflame Hero's Legacy. If you do, it gains equipped cost three and equipped creature gets plus three plus three and loses all other abilities. So this becomes a weapon and stops being a mana rock. And it gives something plus three plus three with an equip cost of three. It's very cool design, um, but there's not a lot of equipment synergies in this set. So it kind of feels out of place, but it's really neat. Next up, we have a Prophetic Prism reprint. Uh, this is Ariette in her um, young form. And Prophetic Prism has been reprinted so many times, but this is a cool art uh, for it. it when it etbs you draw a card and then you can filter mana through it so you pay one tap it to add one mana of any color now we've got scarecrow guide which is two colorless for a two one scarecrow with reach which is pretty neat and then you can pay one add one mana of any color activate only once per turn so this is um basically the same ability as prophetic prism uh, but you can only do it once per turn, and you don't have to tap the Scarecrow in order to do it. So you can just filter one mana each turn and still use it to block or attack. And then we've got a reprint of Soul Guide Lantern, which is one colorless for an artifact. When it ETBs, exile target card from a graveyard, and then you can sacrifice it to exile an, op an opponent's each opponent's graveyard, the entire thing. Or you can pay one to tap it and sacrifice it to draw a card. Um, so you can sacrifice it for free and exile everyone's graveyards except for yourself. Or you can pay one to sacrifice it and draw a card. Uh, Soul Guide Lantern is a good card. It's 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 really strong graveyard hate and it gets you the opportunity to um, draw a card if need be. And we've got Sir Ginger, the Meal Ender. Uh, this is one of the poster characters for the set. Sir Ginger is two colorless for a 3-1 Food Knight, legendary artifact creature. Sir Ginger has Trample, Hexproof, and Haste as long as an opponent controls a Planeswalker. 
Um, there's only one Planeswalker in this set, so if you're playing Limited, uh, that's very unlikely to happen. If you're playing Constructed, that's a little bit more likely to happen. Uh, whenever on, on whenever another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Sir Ginger and Scry 1. So this is really strong. Um, there's a lot of artifacts that you can sacrifice. There's a lot of food, all the food, all the treasure. Those are all artifacts. Um, so every time you're using those, Sir Ginger gets bigger and you get to scry. Um, and then you can pay two to sacrifice Sir Ginger and gain life equal to its power. So just like any other food, um, at the base level, you gain three life. But if Sir Ginger manages to grow in power, um, you'll gain more life that way. So Sir Ginger is really neat. I like the design a lot. And then the final artifact is the perfect flavor uh, win for this entire set. It's three bowls of porridge from... Um, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. It is two colorless for an artifact food, and you can pay two to choose one that hasn't been chosen. So the first one is uh, three bowls of porridge deals two damage to target creature because it's too hot. The second one is tap target creature because it's too cold. And then the third one is you sacrifice it and gain three life because that bowl of porridge is just right. Um, I think that's such a good flavor win. Um, it's going to be useful as well to do the damage to tap a creature and then gain three life. I think this card is going to be one that people ignore initially because a lot of the times in these big sets, people don't pay enough attention to the artifacts and something like this goes under the radar. And then in limited, as the months and weeks go on, people start to pick up on how good this could be in your two slot. And then we jump into the lands. So there's a few reprints, and then we'll get to some uh, new stuff. So Crystal Grotto is getting a reprint, which is great. It ETBs uh, Scry 1, and you can tap to add colorless or filter a mana through it. Edgewall Inn is new. It is a enters tapped, and then when it enters, you choose a color. You can tap it to add one mana of the chosen color or pay three to sacrifice it and return target card that has an adventure from your graveyard to your hand, which is useful in the end game. And then um, Elena Danner did this beautiful painting for an Evolving Wilds reprint, which you sacrifice, search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. And then we get into the creature lands. So most of the color pairs, or I guess five of the color pairs, um, the five most focused color pairs have creature lands in this set the first one is restless bivouac they're all restless something uh so this one's restless bivouac it's enters the battlefield tapped taps for red or white and then you can pay three uh one what one a red and a white for it to become a two two red and white ox creature until end of turn it's still a land whenever it attacks you may put a one one counter on target creature you control um, so just kind of following that aggro aggressive attack strategy. Restless Cottage is the Golgari uh, creature land. It enters tapped, adds taps to add black or green, and then you can pay two, a black and a green. It becomes a 4-4 four, four black and green horror creature until end of turn. It's still a land. Whenever it attacks, create a food token, then exile one card from target graveyard, uh, which is really good. It's food generator and graveyard hate exactly what Golgari wants to do in this set and then we've got the Orzov uh, restless fortress enters tapped taps for white or black and then you could pay two white black it becomes a one four white and black nightmare creature until end of turn still a land whenever restless fortress attacks defending player loses two life and you gain two life so that's cool uh, some siphoning there then we've got the um, Is It Restless Spire. Enters tapped, taps for blue or red. Uh, pay one red, one blue. Until end of turn, Restless Spire becomes a 2-1 blue and red elemental creature with as long as it's your turn, this creature has first strike. Um, and it's still a land, so you can still tap it for mana. Um, and whenever it attacks, you get to scry one, which is nice. 
And then the last one is the Simic Restless Vine Stalk. Comes in tapped, taps for green or blue mana. And then you could pay three green and blue, which is five, which is the the goal number of the Simic archetype. Um, and it becomes a 5-5 five, five green and blue plant creature with trample, still a land. Whenever it attacks, up to one other target creature has base power and toughness 3-3 three, three, until end of turn. Um, obviously, these creature lands are really, really cool. Um, I like that they're bringing more creature lands back. I think it's fantastic. I think it's a really, really cool way to um, add some more flavor um yeah and that's it for the colorless and lands i know there's not that many but uh i wanted to do this video um just to kind of keep it all separate a little bit and again thank you so much for watching these i'm so excited to play this set uh, i was not a major magic player when the first eldraine set came out i jumped in around the kaldheim um Dungeons and Dragons timeline. So I was just a little late, but I'm very excited to play this set. Pre release is this weekend, and then full release is the weekend following. So definitely get your hands on some of these cards. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for being here. It would mean the world to us if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, post a comment. Let me know which of these artifacts and lands. Uh, you're most excited for do you like creature lands which of these color pairs are you excited to try um or just say hi i like talking to people about magic if you want to discuss anything please feel free to leave a comment uh, i will respond to it if it's appropriate um even if you don't want to talk about anything magic related and you just need to reach out feel free to do so uh, you are loved you are worth the space and time you take up Please take your own space. Uh, be kind to one another. Be kind to yourself. It's really easy to pour all of your love into other people and not give any to yourself. So ensure that you're doing that. Take the time to say something nice about yourself when you lock eyes in the mirror. I spend, I still do it, but I spend so much time avoiding mirrors because I just start to pick everything apart. Um, and I have a really hard time loving myself so i'm always trying to be better at that and i'm always trying to encourage other people to be better at that um it's really nice to get love from someone else but it's not always going to be there so being able to afford yourself some love and gift that to yourself is really key to our survival our thriving our growth um and understand that no matter who you are or where you are or what you've done uh you deserve that um and i hope you see cute puppies today i hope you eat something delicious even if it's really small take the time to kind of soak in those small moments the perfect bite of something the perfect laugh you hear uh the perfect time spent with uh loved ones do that and i'm i promise you it'll make you feel better and it'll fuel you um yeah i hope all of your opponents mulligan and i hope all of your opening hands are keeps i will see you guys on the next one thank you for